Chapter 13 Prisoner 9064 bellowed a Kurok guard. Uli tried to wipe the spittle off his face, but the restraints were too tight. Yes, he answered, a little dazed. He was chained with forty other prisoners in a holding room on board a grimy transport ship. You've been summoned to the bridge, smiled the fat Kurok, whose lizard skin was impenetrable to nearly all sharp edges. The guard unhooked his chain from the wall and pushed him towards the elevator. Easy now. No sudden movements, Sirax scum. They took a jerky elevator up three floors, where Uli was marched further down a hallway, until they stopped at a door. Bridge. Authorized personnel only. The Kurok opened the door, and they walked into a large, open room. Well, well, well. Uli Mandrigs. Sirak commander. Revolutionary. Strategist, said the man in the captain's chair. He spun around to face the guest. Who are you? asked Uli, confused. I suppose you probably wouldn't recognize my face. Perhaps you know me by my former nickname, Rao's Tooth. Ah, one of the traitors, he said, realizing. Was it worth it, whatever they paid you? I chose life. Sear acting stand a chance against the Federation, replied the captain. You coward. Plenty of others had the courage to stay and fight. You threw away your dignity and honor for a few extra years of life, and for what? To be captain of some shitty transport ship? Meh. You're right. I'd rather live a few extra happy years than be dead. Because you know what? I don't believe in that kooky religion of yours. I don't believe in an afterlife. This is all we get, Uli. And that's why we need to make the most out of life. Get as many women as you can, drink, smoke, and be merry. That's the real motto of the Federation, not the one they print in the school books. One shouldn't be troubled with intergalactic problems. One should only live for their personal satisfaction. I happen to be perfectly satisfied, growled Uli, defending and preserving my people's culture, their traditions, their lives. I'm not interested in your fucking immature, perverted philosophy. The captain laughed. Look out the window, Uli. What do you see? Uli looked curiously at the captain for a few seconds, then approached the large, thick transparent panels at the front of the bridge. He saw massive facilities floating silently. Huge warships sat unmoving in the black nothingness. Finally, he took in the planets and the formations. It's Sirak, he whispered. Correct, said the captain, who had joined him in peering out the window. This is what has become of your great empire. This is the end. See those structures? They control the ever-advancing Melurian siege shields. The path to Sirak 8 and 9, as you can see, has been severed and represents the southern front. Your people are being starved to death and there's nothing you can do about it. Uli looked out at his system, and as he panned his way across, his heart dropped. Faradun, his home planet, was now a brownish, shit-colored planet. He remembered the lush forests, rivers, and valleys that was renowned throughout all the galaxy. Now those were all gone. Desertification had set in. The atmosphere had been poisoned. Is the air on Peridon still toxic? He asked the captain. The captain stared at the planet briefly. Uli thought he caught a glimmer of sadness, disappointment on the man's face. It's becoming more and more stable now. One can traverse the planet without a mask, but it is not capable of returning long-term life. The soil has proved fertile, though. The planet feeds the war efforts out here, with the many farms we constructed there. A flicker of green light caught Uli's attention. Shifts were moving from the Sirak side. Bursts of lights were flying across the shield lines. The Sirak gasped as one of the large Federation cruisers exploded into bits. Shortly thereafter, the one next to it blew into smithereens. The captain turned to see what got the prisoner's attention. 
He took in the situation for a few seconds before the comms buzzed. Emergency, emergency. All military vessels engage in battle. We are under attack. Repeat, we are under attack. The shields are down. Repeat, the shields are down. All non-essential ships evacuate immediately via the tunnel. The message began looping, but by this time, the captain had already reached his chair and fired up the ship's main engines. You take the prisoner back to the holding bay. Uli remained frozen in place, his eyes fixed on the ongoing battle. Even as the Kruok carried him out of the bridge, he watched as a couple smaller Syrac taggers arced through the battle space, their vectors perfectly practiced and fluid, just like his were once upon a time. As he was buckled back into the wall, among the glaring and wandering faces of the other prisoners, he felt the ship shudder in the weightless feeling that accompanied going through a tunneler. They were no longer in chase, but something had happened. His people had done it. They had somehow done it. <laughs>